right, so I just measured out my borders using this watercolor pencil. So that way if I get anything wrong, I could just wash it right off or just with a damp cloth. Planned out my design in advance. Move that over a little bit so that I kind of have a general sketch and a general idea of what I'm going to do here. So I made sure all of the dimensions work and all that jazz so that, you know, you don't want to fix it while it's on the board, you want to fix it while it's on a piece of trace paper. All right, now I need to make my corners. All right, so I think this is the. this exacto blade. I'm going to put a new blade on it, a nice sharp blade, and I'm going to score the edge before I tape it. And the reason I do that is so that if any paint seeps under the tape, which happens all the time, I don't care how much you press down on the tape, which I will be doing like this, it doesn't matter. You will get a little bit that seeps under and it will make you crazy. I'm also going to put this little piece of gummy eraser on either side so that my ruler doesn't slip. Can you tell I've learned some things the hard way? You want to sand it down. Take any sheen off of here so that your first coat sticks to it. Give for my tack cloth. I want to get off any excess dust before I put my base down. Right. So normally I would use gesso as my base coat. However, ooh, that needs to be mixed. Because this board was um, more than likely stained, um, I don't know. I don't know what it was treated with. It could have been wax. It could have been a bit of varnish. So I need that first surface to, to adhere really well. So I'm just going to go with bin to block any stains and adhere. And then after that, I'll put down a coat of uh, gesso. Okay, so I let my bin dry overnight. I've got gesso over two coats of the bin. Did my scratch test to make sure it adhered, and it did. So now I'm just gonna put a base coat of this a number of sample boards. Um, I've got about four of these boards and I'm going to try my layering. I want a specific colorway that does take a little bit of tweaking. So I'm going to do these sample boards, but what's really cool is if they come out nice, I can actually use them as paintings. Even though the sample process does take quite a while, I might come out with three or four new paintings, uh, which is awesome. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so I've got the surface ready and prepared for the adhesive sizing for the metal leaf, which will come next. This is so boring, I'm not going to have you watch this whole thing, but basically, I'm just going to brush it on. I didn't record the whole metal leafing process because most of you have seen that before and it's a little bit boring and redundant. So um, I'm just moving on to the sample boards and this is going to show the amount of layering that I do. I'm using acrylic inks, watercolor crayons, some isolating varnishes, and just building it up and building it up to create some interest, some texture, some levels of contrast. And then the next step is going to be to do 
a very soft wash over the whole thing, which actually breaks up the colors and makes them each a little bit unique. And here's that. And then I went over that glaze with some acrylic inks again, which adds a new color into the whole mix. And then I'm scratching away at it with my X-Acto blade to create texture to unearth some of the colors. And then once again, layering over that with some washes of greens and inks and it just it's worth it it makes a big difference in terms of overall texture and feeling of depth let's put a very light wash of kind of a pale gray green over the um, branches this gives me i don't know first of all just makes it way more painful than it needs to be i'm apparently kind of into that <laughs> and um, but it does give me some interesting edges on my branches so that's really the real reason I do it. And in this case, I have, I just put the glaze on, so I'm just using a little bit of water to get it off. So it doesn't have to be quite as aggressive. I'm still going and it's like three days later. <laughs> so I, I thought I'd put the last bit as it's kind of starting to all come together. Um, and then we'll move on from here. When I look at the big picture, this may have to go. There'll probably be some other stuff in here because you want it, you don't want it to be even and all over. You want it to have an interesting composition. So I'm gonna keep plugging away on filling in the white. I'm already about three hours in, just kind of working this much out. And um, so I'll probably be the rest of the day. Okay, so this guy here, just a little fat. I'm going to start trying to define these little bits of the pine needles. So in order to do that and keep them kind of weird and wiggly so they don't look too overly worked or, or just not as spontaneous as I like, I take a little bit of this alcohol right here and I'm going to wet this whole area down. And I'm going to take the knife, the exacto knife. And I'm going to just kind of like let my hands just not even barely look at what I'm doing because if the kiss of death when you're trying to be organic is to let your eyes try to make sense and patterns out of things. So you really want to kind of just like be really loosey goosey with your X-Acto blade. And you can always paint over what you don't like. So you don't have to like worry if you go too far. My needle shapes. So that's the next step. So here, I am just putting the little details in the ends of the little pine um, needles. So just weaving in and out with some white to make them have some really interesting little bottoms. I'll put in a clip of the finished part here so you can see what that comes out to be. So this gives you the idea and you can also see all the different layers of glazes and paints that I've put on so you can see you know all this craziness and the time I take to do this makes a difference in the end when you see it up close okay here's the most scary part of this entire project peeling the tape there go. and why is it scary because if I peel it and it lifts some of the paint with it it's gonna really mess up my whole project so I have taken a knife and scored all along the, um, the tape edge. Okay. So far so good. I re-taped the edges so I could put this brown stripe on. So I'm gonna peel the tape off once I do a final varnish. So here are some of the detail shots of the final product and I hope you can appreciate the amount of colors that you can see and the glowing quality with the metal leaf underneath and why I do this the way that I do this. There's no other way to achieve it without building up all these layers. But I also hope it helps people understand the pricing of my paintings because I know they're expensive, but I'm gonna break down the prices of what I make based on the square inch prices that I give. And you'll see that I'm not making a lot of money here. I do this for the love of it and I do it for the way it turns out, but um, it's certainly not a money-making endeavor. <laughs>